California presents Chapter 3 of a new air show. The star of the show, Gene Heschel, in his greatest of all roles. The title of the show, Dr. Christian. The sponsor of the show, the Cheese Bro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline. For years, Gene Herschel was one of the outstanding character actors of pictures. Then came the day that he was assigned to the part of the country doctor in the 20th Century Fox production of that name. And Gene Herschel became one of the foremost stars of Hollywood. It gives us great pleasure to be able to bring to you the extraordinary gifts of this great artist in the kind of role that made him famous and that he made famous. As Paul Christian, the doctor of River's End, Gene Herschel offers you an absorbing half hour of human drama. Thrills, laughter, tears, satisfying philosophy. The opening scene of today's story takes place in Dr. Christian's reception room. It is empty now, but presently the door of his private office opens and... Well, now, I suppose I'm silly, Dr. Christian, but I just got to wondering. Of course, it can't be anything much. I'm, I'm really not sick. Well, we won't worry about it. I've sent Judy to the drugstore to get you some medicine. Oh, I could have picked it up on my way home. Oh, that's all right. Judy wasn't busy. Sit down, Mrs. Tansy. How's the rest of the family, Ben? Just fine, Doctor. Ethel's married now, you know. Yes, so I heard. Seen a husband living here in River Sand? Yes. They're staying with us until Wilma gets something to do. Jobs are pretty scarce now. Oh, I guess that's right. How's Bud? I haven't seen him since last summer when I set his arm. Oh, he's fine, too. He's coming after me in the car. Oh, and and he's going on the radio. Oh, he is? Well, well. Mm-hmm. Him and Al Perry. Bud's going to play the piano and Al's going to play the guitar. They're driving to the city next week to have a... Uh, now, what did Bill call it? Oh, an audition. Let's see. If I remember right, Ethel is a musician, too, isn't she? Ethel's got a real nice voice. Oh, here's Judy. Sorry I've been so slow, but Roy Davis was out and didn't come back till 5 o'clock. And he was the only one to fill the prescription. My gracious, is it 5 o'clock? Uh, a little after, according to my watch. Well, Bud said he'd be here with the car by 4.30. Well, I, I guess I'd better not wait if I'm going to have supper ready for Pat. Goodbye, Dr. Christian. Goodbye. The directions for the medicine on the bottle. Goodbye, Mrs. Tansy. Say, Judy, I've been trying to think. Who did Ethel Tansy marry? Oh, a fellow by the name of Wilmer Grove. From around here? No. She met him when she was going to business college in the city. He taught public speaking or something. He's an elocutionist. <laughs> Pat Tansy's boy is a pianist, and his daughter is a vocalist, and his son-in-law is an elocutionist. <laughs> <laughs> now, bet Pat's a pessimist. <laughs> Gee, Doc, I thought maybe your office would be closed. Hey, where's Mom? Your mother just left, Bud. She expected you at 4.30. Yeah. I went to watch football practice after school and didn't stop to realize how late it was getting. She'd only waited a few minutes. She did wait, a half an hour. But I forgot. Oh, I know. I feel like a heel not showing up. You shouldn't let your mother walk home. But, gee, I... I dare say that she'll forgive you, but It's a way mothers have. Only after this, you'd better remember. The day might come when you wouldn't forgive yourself. Oh, Doc, I'd do anything for Mom. You know I would. Well, then the time to do it is right now. While you still have a chance. Doc. Doc, there isn't anything the matter with Mom, is there? She... She isn't sick, is she? Who said she was sick? Does she have to be sick before you'll drive her home in the car? No, of course not, only... Only I wasn't late on purpose. Oh, I know you weren't, Bud. But you must stop and think that your mother isn't as young as she used to be or as strong. If there's anything you can do, no matter how small, to make it easier for her, you ought to do it. All right, Doc. Oh, say, we're giving her a party. So? Yeah, on her birthday. Why don't you and Judy come? Oh, I'd be glad to, Bud. When is it? Next Wednesday night, for supper. Ah, oh, but Wednesday night's the night before Thanksgiving. I ought to be home. Yeah, I know it, but, well, if we put the party off, it wouldn't be on her birthday, and we're giving it specially for her. Doc, you can make it, can't you? Oh, sure, sure, I can be there for a little while anyway. Swell. Oh, and keep it under your hat. We want to surprise her. Well, so long. Goodbye, bud. And don't forget, it's next Wednesday. All right. It's nice Mrs. Tansy's birthday comes Thanksgiving week, isn't it? Gives the family an added blessing to be thankful for. Yes, only sometimes we don't know they are blessings until we lose them. It 
It was more than 50 years ago that Robert A. Cheesebro, inspired by the legends of the Indians concerning the healing properties of crude petroleum, refined and perfected Vaseline petroleum jelly for medicinal use. Since that day, the trademark Vaseline has become one of the most widely known trademarks in the world. Physicians use Vaseline jelly as a base for many prescriptions. Hospitals and clinics use it daily in the care of patients, and in the home, it is an established treatment for first aid minor emergencies such as cuts, burns, and scalds. For only 10 cents a jar, this widely useful product is available everywhere. It can truly be called a blessing to humanity. We take you back now to the Tansy home in River's End, where preparations for Mom's party are in full swing. The time is late Wednesday afternoon. The scene, the living room of the Tansy home. Mrs. Tansy is bending over an ironing board. Bud, don't slam doors that way. Ethel's sleeping. Say, what does she think she is, a duchess or something? Taking naps every afternoon? Now, Bud, Ethel isn't strong. She needs her rest. Oh, nerds. Say, Mom, how long are you going to be in here with that ironing board? Until I get this shirt ironed. Wilmer wanted to wear it today, so I got up a little early and washed it. Well, make it snappy, will you, Mom? Uh, say, Mary. Hiya, Dad. Oh, hello, Bud. Mary, did you see my yellow tie any place? It's in your top drawer. No, it ain't. I've looked all over for it. Now, it's a funny thing. Every time I want to wear my yellow tie, it's missing. You haven't got it, have you, bud? If I had, I'd sure keep it a deep secret, that tie. I'll find it for you, Pat. I'm just through here. Oh. Hey, Mom, what's the matter? Oh. oh, it's nothing. Just a little stitch in my side, I guess, when I bent over to, to pick up the ironing board. It, it's gone now. Well, be careful, Mom. You know, we're giving this party for you. Yeah, that's right. You're the guest of honor. And you won't forget me tie, will you? I'll look for it as soon as I put this ironing board away. Hey, Dad, you ought to hear the new opening me and Al Perry's worked out for our radio program. Hey, get a load of this. Presenting Al Perry and Bud Tansy, those rivers and hillbillies. We'll be coming up the river when we come. We'll be coming up the river when we come. We'll be coming up the river, Bud! we'll be coming Bud! up the river, we'll be coming up the river oh, when we Bud, come. Will you stop that racket? Well, look who's talking. If it ain't the Duchess. Oh, we come to entertain you when we oh, come. Oh, Dad, make him stop. Oh, oh no, Ethel. What is a right to sing? Well, if you call that singing, it's horrible. Where's Mother? Uh, she just went to the kitchen to tend to dinner. Well, say, Bud, you better find out if she wants anything at the grocery. Oh, can't Wilmer go? I want to practice our radio program. You go yourself. Wilmer's busy working on his stamp collection. <laughs> working is good. Well, you'd be a lot better off if you'd take up something like that instead of this silly hillbilly business. As soon as Wilmer gets a stamp from Stockholm, he'll have his first book all filled. Go on, bud. Find out what Mother wants at the grocery. Hey, wait a minute. How's this? Oh, Wilmer sticks stamps with the greatest of these. Has Greek stamps and Greek stamps and funny Chinese. Oh, and stamps from Bombay and the New Hebrides. But he stuck for a stamp from Stockholm. Bum, bum. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, hello, Wilmer. Did I hear music? No. I'm very fond of music. It steals into all your moods. In your gayer moments, in your sorrows, in your joys... In your head. In your... <laughs> no. Uh, look, now while we're all here, let's call Mother in and... Uh, wait a minute. Well, hello, Doc. Oh, oh hello, Doc. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Say, hadn't you better quiet down a little? If this is a surprise party, why... Yeah, the surprise is out. You couldn't keep a thing like this from Mary. She's too sharp. And besides, we had to tell her so she could cook the dinner. Oh, she's cooking the dinner. Sure. Yeah, Doc. And we're giving her a party that is a party. Why, we've invited about everybody in town. Yeah, there's nothing small about us. I see. Oh, and you're just in time, Dr. Christian. We're going to call her out of the kitchen now and give her her present. Aren't you afraid that'll interfere with her having dinner on time? No, oh, she can go right back. Uh, Mary! Oh, Mary! Everybody ready now? Here she comes. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! To the dearest and sweetest mother in the world. And to the best wife I ever had. I'd like to offer my congratulations. Oh, hello, Dr. Christian. Thank you. Here, Mom. 
This is for you. Oh, mm. Bud. What is it? It's a present from all of us. Go on, open it, Mother. <laughs> a vacuum cleaner. Oh, you shouldn't have bought anything so expensive. And I'd like to know why. Huh, the thing isn't good enough for you. It ought to be gold-plated and, and set with diamonds. It's a very practical gift, Mother. Yeah, Mom. It'll be a lot easier than sweeping with a broom. Oh, it's... it's lovely. I have a little present for you, too, Mrs. Tansy. But it isn't very practical. Well, thank you, Dr. Christian. I... I don't know why people are so good to me. I, I just don't. I'll tell you why, Mom. Come on, everybody, join in. And it's what a million things she gave me. Oh, it's only that she's proving more. Tears for the tears she shed to save me. Age is for a heart as pure as gold. Me is for a... Oh, Mom! Mother! Oh, Mother. Why, Why she, she's painted. Mary, darling. Get back, will you? I'll bring a glass of water to someone and hurry. Oh, Mother. Doc, what is it? What's happened? I don't know yet. Where's that water? Here it is, Doc. Oh. There. I think she feels a little better. Oh, Mother, tell me, what's the matter? Oh, it... It must have been the... The excitement. Uh, everything went black. Just take it easy, Mrs. Tansy. Pat, help me take her upstairs. All right, Doc. You've got to get to bed right away. Oh, no, I... I've got to get back to the kitchen. I'll, I'll be all right. The, the company will be coming in a minute. And you There's see not I... going to be any company. Come on, Pat. And the rest of you wait here. living room of the Tansy home about half an hour later. A circle of anxious faces as Pat comes slowly down the stairs. Where's Dr. Christian? Uh, he'll be down in a minute. What did he say about Mom? Nothing. Only he shook his head. Well, I wouldn't worry yet. I'm sure she can't be seriously ill. A serious illness doesn't appear so suddenly. There are symptoms, indications. And I don't think any of us have ever heard her complain. Mm, I don't know. I, I phoned all the guests. told them not to come. But... It doesn't seem possible that anything could happen to Mother. I, I couldn't stand it if... if oh, gee, Ethel. Don't cry. we gotta, we got to keep our chins up. It won't do no good to, to cry about it. But, but on her birthday... There, there, darling. Now, dry your eyes. Here comes the doctor. Dr. Christian. Sit down, Ethel. All of you. Uh, you... You can tell us, Doc. I guess we can take it. I'm afraid it's some bad news. <gasps> Doc, what is it? Well, it's just this. Your mother has always worked hard. Too hard. <laughs> She's worked for you and taken care of you and scraped to send you to school. She's nursed Pat when he was sick and encouraged him when he was out of a job. And you've taken all this for granted. You let her go on drudging and slaving 365 days a year. You invite the whole town here for a birthday dinner and let her cook it. But just because you chip in and buy a present, you feel very pleased with yourself. But, 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 Doc, I didn't think you that... You never think. Any of you. Most of the trouble and sorrow in this world isn't caused by mean people, vicious people. It's caused by people who don't think. Dr. Christian, if you'll only save her... I can't save her. Oh, Doc... It's her heart. Oh. And I can't do anything. But maybe you can. What is it? What should we do? Well, she'll have to be quiet. Stay in bed. She'll need a nurse, and maybe after a while, we'll want to call in a specialist. If we do, it'll be expensive. Oh, that's all right, Doc. You're working now, aren't you? Yes. How about you, Wilma? Well, I'm looking for employment. Oh, I've forgotten. What do you do? I'm a diction instructor. I teach people to talk. I don't think you'll make much headway here. Most people in Rivers End talk too much. Yes, the possibilities do seem a trifle meager. How long have you been without a job? 
Well, I should say I've been available for about eight months. You've been living here eight months without working? Oh, but Dr. Christian, he... he I wouldn't say you were available. I'll say you're a bum. Why? Why, see here, sir. Sit down. Well, you can't talk to me. I said sit down. Is it Wilma's fault if he can't find anything to do? Well, we'll come to that presently. It seems to me that you took a course in business college, didn't you, Ethel? Yes, I did. But I got married right afterward. Yes, and brought your husband here to live with your mother. Yes, so I haven't had any practical experience. Well, I know just the place where you can get it. They're looking for a stenographer in the office of the lumber yard. And I'll be earning money too, Doc. Big money on the radio. Just as soon as I start delivering results. Yes, you'll be earning money tomorrow. They live on groceries. Huh? I'm going to get you a job working after school at Barlow's store. Uh, yeah, but, but Doc, keep I... Keep quiet, keep quiet. Dr. Christian knows what he's about. The only thing that sort of puzzles me, Doc, is who's going to take care of the home and do the cooking? Well, you'll all have to help with the housework. You can do your, your share when you get home in the evening. Uh, yes, uh, but hold on there, Doc. I do a good day's work at the shop. When the whistle blows at five o'clock, I like to quit. Mother did a good day's work, too. Only for her, there wasn't any whistle. All right, Doc. I'm game. I'll do my share. But still, there's a cooking. Mm, I think Wilma can do that. Me? I mean, I. Cook? Looks that way, Wilma. You're the only one left to do it. But I... I've never cooked in all my life. Well, don't feel badly about it, because you're going to learn right now. It's a good thing Mrs. Tansy always keeps that jar of Vaseline jelly on the shelf over the kitchen sink. For in the next two weeks, Wilmer had great need of it to soothe the daily burns and scalds he acquired in the heat of unaccustomed battling with the cook stove. The next scene of our story takes place two weeks later in that same kitchen. Oh, well, I, I got the front room clean. Oh, 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 me back. When will supper be ready? In about ten minutes. You still have time to finish putting that shelf paper on the pantry shelves. Oh, I, I haven't had a decent meal in this house. Well, you're lucky to get any. Oh, don't see why that nurse couldn't do a bit of cooking for us. As long as she has to fix up a tray for Mother. She says she isn't hired to cook for the whole family. Look out, bud. What are you doing? Well, what's the matter? What's the matter? Look at your feet. Tracking mud all over this kitchen floor. Do you think I haven't anything to do but clean up after you? No, I didn't know my feet were muddy. I worked my fingers to the bone and then you... Okay, okay, I'll get a rag and wipe it up. Wait, don't take that. It's my best tea towel. Take that one over there. Well, where's Ethel? Didn't you stop for her? Yeah, but they're pretty busy over at the lumber yard. She'll be late. There. Does the floor look all right now? It'll do. I'm going up and see Mom. Come in. I didn't see any light in the front room, so I came around to the back. Hmm. Hello, Doc. Have you had supper? Yes, I've just come from supper. Why, I had black bean soup and a nice, thick, juicy steak, fine, fine fried potato. Oh. What have we got, Elmer? Boiled mutton. What, again? Well, it's very nourishing, Pat. Yeah, but I'm tired of boiled mutton. That's all he ever gives us. Don't you know any other way of cooking mutton besides boiling it? If boiling is good enough for me, it's good enough for you. I sweep and clean and dust until I'm worn out. And I sit down every night to a supper of boiled mutton. Now, Pat... If you don't like it, get your own meal. And don't think I couldn't. Well, you act like there was some trick to cooking. I've seen Mother get up a meal in 20 minutes. Now I'm asking you, Doc. Could a man eat anything like this? Don't touch that. It's hot. Oh! Oh! Look what you've done. Upset it. Now, none of us will have any dinner. Oh. No, it wasn't my fault. It was your fault. Why don't you keep out of the kitchen? Are you trying to order me out of the kitchen in my own house? Now, please, please. Oh, if Mother were only here to cook us a meal again. Just one meal. You'd better get someone to cook it, because I'm through. Now, don't tell me that four grown people can't take care of this house without quarreling. From now on, it's three people. You can count me out. They need men at the lumber yard, and I'm going over there in the morning and get me a job. Wilma, if you leave the kitchen, you'll all starve. Well, let Ethel cook. 
time she learned something about housekeeping anyway. Her mother's babied her ever since she was a little girl. She's never turned her hand to no, anything. No, no, no. Hold and on, hold on. And that goes for you, too. You're the biggest baby of the lot. You can't even dress yourself. Where's my overcoat? What became of my tie? And if anyone suggests you do a little work around the place, you will let out a roar like a steam engine. Wilma, you shouldn't talk like that. Well, well, it's the truth. No, oh, yeah? And what about you? What did you ever do to earn your board and keep? Collected postage stamps. At least Ethel works and helps to support the family. All right. Then we'll trade places. I'll help support the family and Ethel can run the house. If she or anyone else thinks it's easy, just try it for a while. When Mother was well, we didn't appreciate what a cinch we had. Wilma, I think you are beginning to see the dawn of a great light. It is important for the young man starting out on a new job to present a neat, well-groomed appearance. Vaseline hair tonic can make it easy for you. Simply apply a very few drops and brush the hair into place. You'll find this quick application gives luster to the hair and keeps it orderly and neat for the day. But for lasting hair health, you should do more than this. Once a week at least, massage your scalp with Vaseline hair tonic. Give it a good brisk workout till the scalp is pink with exercise. Then shampoo the hair, and when it is dry, groom it again with Vaseline Hair Tonic. A 40-cent bottle of Vaseline Hair Tonic will give you six to ten such weekly treatments in addition to daily grooming. Just a few cents a week is not much to ask you to spend for both hair health and essential good grooming, is it? Vaseline Hair Tonic in handy-shaped bottles is for sale at all drugstores. We return you now to our story of Dr. Christian of River's End with Jean Herschel, beloved Hollywood star in the title role. One month has passed since Wilmer Grove stalked out of the kitchen of his mother-in-law's home and got a man-sized job in the lumber yard. And Dr. Christian has decided to look in again on the Tansy home to see how things are going. Oh, good evening, Dr. Christian. Good evening, Ethel. You know Judy Price, don't you? Oh, sure. <laughs> she had to work late at the office this evening, so I'm driving her home. Thought I'd drop in my way past. Where is everybody? Bud and Dad are downstairs cleaning up the basement. And Wilmer has to work tonight. <laughs> He's been awfully busy since he was made assistant superintendent. Mm, how's Mother? Oh, I think she's better. And Dr. Christian, I cooked the things for her tray this evening. Yeah. And she ate every <laughs> bit. <laughs> the nurse just brought the tray down. Well, that's well, Ethel. <laughs> I'll go up and see her. But Judy, you can stay here and talk to Ethel. All right. I'll only be a minute. Well, how are we this evening? Hello, Dr. Christian. Oh, I feel just as good as I ever did. Now, don't be too optimistic. Cases like this are very stubborn. I hear you're eating regularly. I always eat regularly. Hmm, well, maybe I've had you mixed up with someone else. And since Ethel has been cooking, oh, you know, Doctor, she's turned out to be a real good cook. Oh, that's one thing she doesn't get from Pat's side of the family. Any pains in your back? No. How's your headache? I never had a headache. Well, you're the only one in this house who hasn't. I don't think there's anything wrong with me at all. There's lots of things wrong with you. I saw this coming on a long time ago, and you should have seen it, too. But you didn't do anything about it. Uh, You just let it go on until it got worse and worse. Well, in a way, you are yourself to blame. Oh, but Dr. Christian... Well, you're too easygoing, that's wrong. You're too kind, and that's wrong. Uh, You let the whole family walk all over you. Why, Doctor, you don't know what you're saying. They're the kindest children in the whole world. Well, they're too good to me. They're always bringing some little present or sending me a card on Mother's Day or... Yes, I've noticed that lots of people who never miss sending a greeting card seldom get around to doing anything else, such as uh, helping with the dishes. But I don't mind doing little chores like that, and it isn't as if the children wouldn't do them. Oh, they don't stop to think. No, all they do is stop. They're just thoughtless. They're lazy. That's the plain truth, Mrs. Tansy. Lazy. Mm -hmm. Why, it's 
It's easier to let mother do it. Oh, no. Well, a mother's love for her children is a wonderful thing. But it isn't all there is to a woman's life. And you let your children take everything else away from you. So you're just a, well, a sort of a handy machine called mother. A machine that once a year they send a pretty postcard to. I don't like to contradict you, Dr. Christian. Oh, but you're mistaken. Well, trying to convince a mother of the faults of her children is about as practical as trying to break down a stone wall by shouting at it. Well, I'll be back the day after tomorrow, and I, I want to find you taking it easy. Good night, Mrs. Tansy. Good night, Doctor. And you take four eggs and separate them. You know, the whites from the yolks. Mm -hmm. And then you whisk up the whites and you fold in the well, sugar. What are you two so interested oh, in? Oh, Ethel's telling me how to make a cake. <laughs> it's one of Mother's favorite recipes. Oh, how is she, Doctor? Well, things seem to be going very nicely now. But we've got to watch out for a relapse. Come along, Judy. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye, Ethel. Goodbye. Bye, Ethel. Well, I hope I can get the car started. This cold weather. Remind me tomorrow, Judy, to have the oil changed. All right. How's Mrs. Tansy? Well, I might be wrong, but I have a hunch that she'll be out of bed tomorrow. Why, that's marvelous. You've made a wonderful cure. Ah, I didn't cure her. She wasn't sick. I just sent her to bed to teach that family of hers what it was like trying to get along without her. But I thought she had something the matter with her heart. All mothers have something the matter with their hearts. They're too big. And so we take leave of Jean Hersholt in Dr. Christian, the chronicle of the life and good works of the Doctor of Rivers End, presented each Sunday afternoon at this hour with the compliments of the makers of Vaseline products. Cold weather is settling down over much of the country, so let us give you these timely reminders. To prevent and relieve chapped lips, get a stick of Vaseline camphor ice. One ten-cent stick will last you for months and keep the lips smooth and soft in the coldest weather. When you think you have a cold coming on, place a little Vaseline jelly in the nostrils to soothe the inflamed membranes and make breathing easier. The tube is handiest for this purpose. If you have to stand on your feet a lot like I do, a Vaseline jelly massage at night will make your feet feel real good. Seems to ease the ache right out of them. You try it and see if you don't thank me for the suggestion. When you purchase Vaseline products, be sure to look for the trademark Vaseline on the package. If you don't see it, you are not getting the genuine article. Prices mentioned on this program apply only in the United States. Next Sunday at this same time, the makers of Vaseline Preparations will present Chapter 4 in the story of Paul Christian, the Doctor of River's End, with Jean Hersholt in the title role. Jean Hersholt appears on this program through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. And if you haven't already seen the new 20th Century Fox picture, Heidi, in which Jean Hersholt appears with Shirley Temple, we invite you to do so. It is now showing at theaters everywhere. Heard on today's program was Turn on the Red Hot Heat, from Walter Wanger's Vogues of 1938. This is Arthur Gilmore bidding you good afternoon for the makers of Vaseline preparations. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>